Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Sinner. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was a wild episode. Okay, so picking picking up something I... Because last episode, I kept like, who's the victim? I didn't understand it. But then it, then when you looked at the part, like when Harry was leaving the crime scene and everything, and a piece of the guy was like, right, the guy didn't do Could we end up finding out his name is Kyle? The, the dude who kept making the reference to like, oh, yeah, like I'm I'm in contact with kind of almost like he's like, oh, I'm in contact between the living world and the spirit realm. And he basically he was contacting Nick. And I was like, that dude, because I kept thinking the entire last episode, I was like, are we supposed to know who that dude is? It didn't cl- even click in my head to think it was that dude. It, it just it didn't correlate. I think I kind of forgot, you know, his face. I mean, he's literally only in that one scene but I think it just it just didn't you know but we saw it actually opens with like Jamie like cleaning up you know uh, he has the murder weapon he cleans up the jacket he even scrapes under his nails to make sure he gets all the blood and tosses his clothes and everything in water uh, but sadly you know, like when he does come home Lilo's waking up because she heard the baby but he's got the baby but she knows oh you got blood on your ears and he's like no you know mosquito blah 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 and he's trying to pretend like everything's okay. He's like, no, I spent time with Harry, which isn't a lie. But the fact of the matter is, you know, he's helping me get help. He tried to help you get help, but that didn't work out. But it's like, no, I'm good. Like, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm trying to make things better. Things are going to go back to the way they were. So while that's all going down, Harry's in this complicated situation because he knows that, you know, it was... um Jamie who killed that guy, Kyle. And for him, the reason why he's taking this all personal, I mean, that's the complicated thing. That's the problem of Harry's process. Harry gets very personal in all the cases that he works on. The fact the man, once again, got per- very personal with Cora's case, got very personal with Julian's case, and now he's gotten super personal with um, Jamie's case. And obviously, we'll get to it soon enough, but that causes issues in itself. Because once again, it's a thing that, like, there's something in each of these cases that responds to something in Harry. He can empathize with it because there's something inside of them that's a, in each of these killers, you know, these these killers, potential victims, who there's something broken inside of them that's also broken in Harry. So his way, the way he kind of is, kind of correlates with them. So he finds this form of kinship. And it's never really been too much of an issue, his connections with the people, whether that be Cora or Julian. This is the first time it's actually kind of blown up in his face, kind of the connection. Because for him, it's like, because this whole case, uh, Jamie's case is so different from every other case because he doesn't, it's a complicated thing where it seems like he's seeing Jamie more as a threat rather than, you know, a victim. Whereas in Julian's case and even in um, Cora's case, he wanted the truth, but it also seemed like he was willing to look at them like victims. And I feel like he's not seeing Julian like that, which that whole spit aspect of it kind of completely changes the way he's approaching this case as well as just the case in general because like if you correlate this compared to like how things went down in Cora's case or Julian's case things are going down quite differently in the fast I mean don't get me wrong Cora's case to Julian's case is different but this seems so vastly different from uh, either of those cases because at least Julian and Cora there were some correlations some similarities at least like how the flow of the investigation kind of went to a certain extent Jamie's just like nah crumble that up throw it out the window because this investigation is a beast all on its own but um because the fact of the matter is Jamie's trying to pretend like everything's okay. The uh, fact is he goes into work and everything. He runs into Emma, which she's like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, Emma, like, ignore everything I say. Because, she, like, now she's confused because it's like, well, you told me not to listen to my parents. I kind of do what I want to, but now they're stressing me out because I don't know what I want to do. But he's like, you shouldn't listen to me. But it's like, you told me, you know, now she's confused because kids need guidance, especially when they're counting on their teachers for guidance. And now he's kind of leaving her up in the air being like, wait, what am I supposed to listen? I'm supposed to listen to you before or am I supposed to not listen to you then or like what's going on, you know? So at the same time, he goes to talk with Harry and, you know, he's like, I, you know, it just, he's like, basically when I say like, I'm not a killer, like that wasn't me. Like the fact is I'm not crazy. And the fact is Harry was like, you need to turn yourself in now. Like at the very least, if you come, if you turn yourself in now, we can keep it quiet. Things won't kind of be as bad. They won't be as public, but you need to turn yourself in because you did kill Kyle. But he's trying to say like, I'm not crazy. You said you understood. But the problem is with Harry, it's a situation of like, you know, because Harry's kind of messed up because a lot of the way he's investigated this investigation, like tracking Jamie the way he did, he didn't do that legally. Like he didn't have the warrant and everything. And he didn't even, the warrants didn't even come through later on to kind of cover his ass for him. So now in like all that, like potentiality stuff, like all the evidence and stuff like that, anything found up during that time, like it doesn't count because it's kind of, you know, um, all kind of gained illegally. So it can't be kind of brought up during the case or even the court, you know. 
But uh, Jamie doesn't want to do it because he's afraid of his life imploding because it's like, you know, he doesn't want Leela to kind of get caught up in all of this. And he's just like, my life would be, you know, kind of ruined. So he's not willing to take that chance. And in retrospect, it's like, you kind of feel like he should have gone with Harry's way because if Harry, if he had gone with Harry's, maybe things wouldn't have domino effect like the way they did. But regardless, you can tell, once again, Harry's not thinking straight during this investigation because he went there and he told Sonya too damn much. Hell, the fact is he shows up there, he didn't see this, but she hid the pictures because she's got multiple pictures of Jamie, so she's been following like, all right, this, oh, all right, something's up here. But the fact of the matter is she keeps asking questions. He's like, no, 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 no. Like, it was complete another accident and like them picking your place and everything. And she's, and because like for Harry, he's trying to make her feel better. Plus, he also likes her. So he's kind of making excuses to see her, but he's trying to also ease her mind. But then she starts asking more and more questions and information starts leaking. It's like, wait, that murder? That was him, wasn't it? He was at that party. Could you, wait, you're all chummy with them? You went to the party with him? He's like, no, I was, you know, so it's like, Harry's process is kind of screwing him over in this regard because he's kind of like let the investigate rather than him kind of taking hold of the investigation it feels like the investigation is taking hold of him because once again it seems like Harry kind of needs these cases it seems like they fulfill him in some shape or form they kind of like it seems like if he's not doing a case if he's not working he just doesn't feel like he fits in he feels kind of a bit like an outsider compared to everything just like the awkwardness of just who he is and everything but um yeah but then you had Sonya go and meet with um, Leela, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I was wondering whether she was going to bring anything up, and then, lo and behold, she sure as hell does. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like, I'm Sonya. It's like, all right, you're the lady. My husband had an accident on my property. It's like, yeah, but that's not it. You know, I've been a little on edge. Oh, wait, you don't know, do you? She spills the beans. That causes problems at home because Lilo was like, yeah, I know what you were. He was like, no, 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 that was Nick's idea. That wasn't me. I didn't know what he was up to. The fact is he kept being like, I didn't do anything, I swear. Which is like, that's the most messed up thing about this, especially, you know, because it's like, Jamie keeps trying to be like, I didn't do anything. It's like, we, we as the audience know you did it. Harry, damn it, knows you did it. And the fact of the matter is you're straight up lying about it. But because he's trying to, like, save face. Because he thought, you know, it's not like, once again, he's not a criminal mastermind. So the fact of the matter is he thinks, like, no, 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 I can get away from this. I can keep my life in order. But his his need to try and keep everything in order is literally having everything shatter because Lilo won't help him. Now, what was interesting during the argument he was bringing up, he was like, you remember what went down two years ago? I could have left, you know, but I didn't. I decided to stick through. I'm like... What went down two years ago with Leela that could have warranted you leaving, but you stuck around? I'm curious what the hell that was. So that was interesting. The fact is, whatever it was, he brought it up like that, kind of being like, so I'm asking you to stick around with me. But the fact of the matter is, Leela's kind of like saying, no, you need to leave and everything. And it's just because like, and it's just like, oh, so he's staying in a motel, a hotel. He goes to school. He gets questioned by a detective. Uh, not even Harry, it's a, 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 a different detective whose case this fall, uh, Kyle's case falls under her jurisdiction. So she ends up asking questions of like, oh, you were with Harry Ambrose. All right, that's that's interesting. And um, obviously, without, you know, skipping around and stuff like that, he ends up basically, essentially, it's like, oh, we're going to keep you on leave for about two months until, you know, and then we can see, check back in two months and see whether how both we're feeling, you're feeling as well as the school. And he's like, oh, you're firing me. And they're like, oh, no, it's like, it's like, no, he's like, bullshit, you're firing me. Because it's like, the fact is you're getting brought up, you know, it's like, oh, the fact is, because for him, it's like, once again, it's like, oh, you're looking after your job. It's not like you're looking, he's like, I've been working here for 10 years the fact of the matter is you're trying to throw me out because he's like i didn't do anything once again you're lying through your teeth because you straight up did do something so it's just it's just it makes it even worse because you're lying about it because it's like it's almost like you're not even willing to admit it to yourself that you did it you know but i guess it's like if you admit it to yourself then you're more likely to admit it to other people and just you know so it's like you know he's not trying to do that so i'm like oh this is this is really interesting so literally every aspect of his life is literally imploding uh, especially later on because like because Leela had told him that Sonya was the one responsible for it, which I'm like uh, that could come back to bite him in the ass because Sonya could end up it would, Sonya could become like a target or something next I don't know I'll get to it in a second but uh uh, Sonya stops by Harry's place and she's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. This whole thing just got me stressed out. I ended up telling uh, his wife about everything. Uh, you know, uh, the the hole that was dug, hit him hanging out with you and the murder. Uh, and I'm like, uh, and that moment, it's just like, all right, I've talked about it before. I'm super suspicious of Sonya. This episode heightened that by like 10. Like, it, that, I don't know, man, it seems like she's sowing seeds, because there's part of me that's like, okay, like, her taking pictures of him, I guess she could, like, there's almost, like, a part of her that's almost inspecting him, like, because, once again, 
Jamie's making it seem like, oh, Nick just picked her by accident. It's like, but Nick was like, oh, we're going to that lady's house. And Jamie's like, wait, what? He didn't know about Sonya's place, that this was her property and stuff like that. Maybe he did, but it's that whole thing was Nick's idea. But he makes it seem like it was completely random. We know that, but Harry's still under the impression it was completely random that he found it. But it's like, no, Nick purposely picked Sonya. So we're like, there's something there. Some connection between Nick and Sonya. Because it's just like, the fact of the matter is... Uh, Jamie had no idea. Like, he backed away from Sonya because he's like, oh, that's what's happening. Because he knew, like, oh, that was Nick's target and everything. So he felt, oh, crap, crap, crap. He's getting embarrassed because, not embarrassed, but just like, holy crap, like something terrible could have happened, you know, if I went ahead and went along with what Nick wanted. But it's a situation just like, she's super suspicious. Because it almost, like I said, it seems like she's sowing seeds of chaos because it seems like she's blowing up both sides of things. She's complicating things for Harry, but it does seem like, well, because she realizes that Harry likes her. She's referring to him as a turtle because he'll use his side, his himself as a detective to be like, oh, the fact of the matter is I shouldn't tell you all this stuff. And it's like, oh, like he hides behind, you know, um, being a detective like I brought up earlier. It's, it's, it seems like it's kind of like she kind of describes it as he kind of hides behind it. It's almost like his shield uh, to kind of, you know, keep him separated from the world to a certain extent. But then they kiss and everything. And I'm just like, oh, dude, this is gone. This is a mess. This is a messy, messy, messy mess. Obviously, the detective, Harry, talks to her, and he's like, all right, let me make it clear to you. Jamie's the one that did it. I was following him, but it's like, oh, you went to the party with him. You went this and that. You were following him and everything. He's like, no, we, you know, the fact of the matter is, but it's like, here, here's some surveillance foot. Here's some footage from, here's some uh, pictures from the camera showing you, like, oh, Jamie, like, that he was, um showing you him leaving and everything because I didn't even talk about it but the reason why because like Harry was out because of the payments he finally took them because of his condition which is like it, once again it's just prob it's like stacked on stacked on stack it's just once again a long domino effect of just things not working out it's like I'm telling you the season is freaking wild just like the way things have gone and you know Harry's trying to push me like no you need to deal with Jamie now because he's a killer and everything like for Harry it's a thing of like he's like the only one that's really seeing Jamie for who he really is because no one else seems to really see him to be for the killer that he is but the fact of the matter is detective she's like I got my own process I'm gonna get to this soon enough thank you Harry but then later on she's questioning you know, Jamie, because she ends up confronting him about like, oh, yeah, look at these photos that show like, oh, what about this bag? Oh, you showed up to work at 430, even though you want to show up a few hours later. And it's just like the inconsistencies in Jamie's story of just like him being kind of on edge. And she's like, the fact of the matter is I've done a lot of cases. Uh, this one in particular doesn't look good for you. And he's like, I'm gonna get a lawyer. She's like, well, you get lawyers involved, then things get nasty. But the fact that matters, I can get you, you know, we can make a plea deal and stuff like that. We can, we can try and make things more favorable because if you kind of stretch this out, which basically Harry, literally everything that Harry is kind of warning him about kind of came about. To be fair, all this fallout is a byproduct of Harry's own interference. So he's the, you know, directly and indirectly blew up Jamie's life and complicated everything. But then we get this situation of like, oh, yeah, the detective, she's asking Harry all these questions because now she's thinking it's suspicious. Because, But even Harry's like, I literally gave you the evidence to point to him being the killer. But for her, it's a situation of like, but yeah, but you're suspicious because all the evidence we have, none of it's a smoking gun. It's all circumstantial evidence. Basically kind of making her think like, oh, you're just giving us enough to kind of make us go down a route that won't lead anywhere but it's you know it's like if, even if he was working with Jamie even if there was that whole situation that, well she's not even really implying that he's working with Jamie uh well she does even straight up refer to him as a suspect so she's probably thinking maybe he's trying to lead them towards Jamie but in actuality it's Harry because what because she had talked she had talked about the fact that this was like oh you are divorcing and everything and all this time you're spending with Jamie kind of insinuating there's something there because he talked to Harry I can't remember if it was before or after but Harry brings up the fact is him and and uh, it's like, I'm the only one that can handle this case because the relationship me and Jamie have, it's just like, oh, really? Kind of going and more about that. It's like, Harry's such an awkward person and he's just kind of getting flustered about being questioned like this because he's also dealing with the fact that his daughter just called him up. It's like, oh, Eli's on the way. He's like, right, because she had asked him about it earlier. But like, obviously, it, it's balancing everything becoming too much because Harry's trying to balance, you know, this whole life as a detective because it it, it is kind of it's kind of what his identity is he kind of feels like he probably he's he kind of holds it so wholeheartedly his identity as one so 
everything else kind of falls to the wayside, you know, he doesn't do well with people, the detective dude, it's like, oh, I'm trying to help you out and everything, he's like, no, I can look after myself, apparently you can't because literally everything's imploding in your life, so, and I think that's kind of, an, I mean, when you actually look at, like, the image they use for the poster for this season, it's an image of, like, Harry on kind of, like, and Harry and Jamie kind of being, like, translucent, like, they're almost, like, being a, a being, like, the being almost the same person so there's overlap there so it seems like they're kind of like it's just interesting that jamie's going through what he's doing and the fact is that harry's kind of going through what he's doing and it's like both their lives are imploding and the fact of the matter is they are kind of similar they do kind of understand each other to a certain extent so it adds this element of just it does not look good especially harry walking out of it which harry brings the whole thing up to his boss about yeah i yeah I went about illegally like following uh tracking jamie's phone and it's like Harry, you're not making this easier for me, and basically puts Harry on leave, and it's just like, dude, everything is going wrong, Jamie overhearing the arguments and stuff like that, it's like, wait, you don't actually have anything to hold me, do you, so I can leave, can I, so the detective, she has to let him, because even she admitted to Harry, like, all the um, evidence is circumstantial, none of it's a, a, a smoking gun. But we do learn, because uh, periodically throughout the episode, Jamie would think back, because he needed to go see uh, Kyle, because like, Kyle could kind of give him the answer he needs, and it's like, oh, your buddy, like, he's talking about the fact that you need to let your fear go, he's like, what are you so afraid of, it's like, I see your phone, which I'm assuming is the phone uh, that happened um, when it's like, instead of calling for help, he just wiped the prints and turned the phone off, I think that, but um, that's the phone I'm insinuating, but maybe it's a different phone, but he's essentially saying that you kind of have to, you know, face it, you don't have to, you, you go through with what, essentially saying go through with this step of like, you need to kind of look it, you know, in the eyes, essentially killing someone, because he kind of went down that route with Nick, but it's like he took the half step, it's like you need to kind of go the full step, and obviously like, Kyle didn't want to tell him. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, no, what did he say? And then Kyle wouldn't. And Jamie proceeded to bash his head in. And in that moment, like, it's just, it's a thing of like, Jamie kind of lost himself in it. But at the same, could we end up like looking back to that moment where Jamie is holding that tube and his hands are covered in dirt. He's kind of a little bloody. Which once again, my thought was kind of like with the hole, like, oh, I'm going to get inside the hole. You're going to give me the tube and we're going to breathe. Like it brings me close to death without maybe potentially giving him a lifeline or something like that's what the tubing's supposed to represent Co or am I supposed or is it supposed to represent with the cell phone thing because obviously Nick kind of insinuates that it had insinuated in the previous episode or maybe the episode before last I think it was a previous episode that he had crossed that line already that he had killed someone before him so part of me was wondering does this have they definitely did something back then during their college days that made Jamie too freaked out that he didn't want to go down that route anymore so but now because of this, like literally everything in Jamie's life is falling apart. You know, Harry, you know, he's trying to spend time with Eli. Eli's asking questions about your dad. And it's like, oh, why haven't you opened a box? He's like, oh, aren't you hungry? He's quick to change the subject. Because once again, we went into a little bit about his mom last season. And like we have not even touched anything on his dad. I mean, granted, Harry's just been kind of like one complicated mess from one season to the next. with Just his personal life. And then you have the whole problem of like your personal life is bleeding over into these cases. Especially in this case, when your boy Jamie randomly shows up at your place to start talking to your grandson and everything. It's like, you know, walk away. And Jamie's pissed because it's like, you want to actually have my friend one minute and then the next moment just turn it up and just kind of push me away. And the fact of the matter, he's like, you can try and pretend like we're not the same, but we are. And the fact of the matter is, um, kind of, he was about to talk to Eli and everything and it's made Harry snap. Harry grabs his like neck in his face and starts kind of choking him a little bit. But Eli walks out and obviously Harry didn't want Eli to see that. And, you know, it's like, oh, and, you know, you have Jamie be like, oh. Finally get to meet the real Ham um, Harry Ambrose, you know, because it's the thing of like Jamie, he's caught up in this whole thing of like he doesn't like lies because Nick was the most truthful person he knew. And so now he feels like, you know, once again, like how, you know, Sonya was saying, like, obviously, like, you know, uh, Harry's like a sh turtle who hides in his shell. Like now it's like Jamie feels like, oh, you basically it's all, oh, you fully kind of you know left your shell and I'm kind of seeing the real you kind of what's buried underneath Vera kind of dived into that last season where it's like there's nothing but rage underneath um Harry like that kind of got brought up last season and I seen we're kind of going down that lane again my mind immediately is like oh 
your daughter is super not going to be happy about the fact is that Eli Rep saw that he's going to bring it up to his mom. Like it's he already has a contentious contentious relationship with his daughter already because it seems like she's super reluctant. Like she's almost went ready for any excuse not to leave Eli around. Like just it's it seems like she just makes any excuse to almost not have contact with her dad to a certain extent. It's just kind of for her. She realizes how much of a mess her dad kind of is, and so. Like, just the beginning of the season kind of insinuates that, and it's just like, oh, he's trying to send something to them or, you know, try to go see them or something like that. Obviously, once I brought it up at the beginning of the season, I think she kind of resents her dad a little bit because it seems like his work has always kind of been more important to him. Obviously, it's a, almost like a for his, his work and plants come easier to deal with them rather than it is to do people deal with people which is interesting considering what your job is the fact is that you have a hard time interacting with people and your job kind of involves you interacting with people i mean to be fair your job in particular involves dealing with the dead but the fact is he's found commonality with these people like i said cora julian and now jamie but like i said this has just been the instance where it's blown up his life the most i mean granted it's caused complications like it caused some complications in season one just everything he's kind of dealing with but it, i think the core case wasn't really like the biggest thing and an issue with him and fake on a you know reuniting obviously last season's case with julian kind of got him thinking about his past and so it's just i don't know it's a mess in the in the sense of like Obviously, the story is great, but I mean a mess within the confines of the characters them themselves. Within the confines of the story themselves, they are all a mess. Jamie's a mess. Uh, uh, so is uh, Harry, and I mean that in the best way. Not like, all oh, a mess and like this is terrible. A mess in the sense that this is good because it's just like everything's just so messed up. And it's just like, things just aren't going to look good for Harry considering the fact is you are literally a suspect. Dude, this was like episode five. I'm like, dude. This is episode five and Jamie's not arrested already. I mean, to be fair, once again, it's like, I know I'm getting so caught up in the semantics of just, because I feel like, once again, season one and season two's cases were similar, and this just seems like the biggest divergence from the other cases, and in a good way. I mean, I wouldn't mind if they were similar, but it's just so interesting to me that despite all this, Jamie's not arrested, and the fact of the matter is, even at this point, he hasn't been arrested, and obviously it's like the thing of, like, Jamie is spiraling, like the way he was acting with Harry, that, that act, he seemed more like Nick at that point, but it might be that thing of now that he's actually killed someone now that what was it that nick had talked about oh the baby your marriage and all that it's just distractions it's not real it's not it's not what matters uh this whole uber mitch situation it seems like it's become real to him and in that moment with harry it's just kind of like it's almost like he's trying to drag harry like it's like he's become the new nick so now i'm thinking like dude Jamie's story is not going to end the same way. It's like, oh, you're going to be a little sympathetic for him. Maybe, but it seems like when it's all said and done, uh, Jamie might go more so down the route of just kind of being, like I said, the new Nick and things just kind of spiraling from there. But once again, I, I won't, I must say it again. I do not trust Sonya, dude. I maybe at the end of it all, it's going to be, oh, she's fine. And then Danny, like maybe she had a reason for doing, but she just looked super suspicious to me. I'm waiting for the ball to drop. Like to kind of be like the other ball, like the other shooter drop. I should rather say. Like, in this whole situation with her, I'm like, you have to have some kind of connection to Jamie, or, or, or at least Nick. Like, there had to be more reason to that. Like, I'm part of, part of me is wondering, like, have, do you actually have some kind of connection to all this, like, uber Mitch stuff of, like, oh, letting your free? Like, I don't know. Because it almost seems like she's kind of doing the same thing because it's like, oh, you are afraid and everything, but everything you're doing seems like you're about trying to confront your fear. So part of me wonders, is it like, I don't know, because even part of me is like, is Jamie going to live? Like, is Harry going to have to be the one to put him down? Is Jamie going to end up killing himself at the end of the day? Is Sonya going to do... I don't know, man. It just it just doesn't feel right. Just everything feels off. And I'm so, it's so excited to see ultimately where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe. We'll like to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.